Good evening and welcome to Our Lady of Guadalupe. This evening we celebrate the baptism of the Lord and the first hymn is 10,000 Reasons or Bless the Lord if you have uh, that with you. You are 
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench, until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teachings. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement, and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. approaching him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. This is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Over the years, a lot of paintings have been made depicting the baptism of the Lord, something that's really important in the life of Jesus and also for all Christians. All the paintings kind of have several things in common. Always the background and it just, the, the, just the scene that's painted is always just calm and serene. There's John the Baptist and Jesus in the water, and the water is clear blue. There's a dove above Jesus' head, and there's rays shining down upon him. Beautiful images, but they're not very accurate. At least, at least from what is there now. Maybe it was accurate 2,000 years ago, but just three years ago, I was blessed to go to the Holy Land, actually this time three years ago, and I went to the spot where Jesus was probably baptized in the Jordan, and it looks complete opposite. The water is dark brown. There's a fence that goes in the middle of the Jordan River, because on one side is the country of Israel, or the state of Israel, Israel, what, whichever, Israel, and then the other side is Jordan. And because of that, because there's two different countries, that's the border. And so there are platforms built up for military personnel, and there are people with AK-47s walking along the river. It's just to keep it safe. It doesn't seem that threatening. It just, you, I mean, you definitely notice it. And there were a lot of people there, too. So that calmness, that sereneness wasn't necessarily there. Way, way different than what is depicted uh, in the pictures Maybe, once again, it was different for Jesus. Maybe it was a little more calm for him. But this is the real world reality of really the images that we otherwise get. It, it shows the messiness of life. But it proves that Christ came to enter into it and to redeem it. And really, this is the main focus or one of the main focuses of Christmas the incarnation that Jesus came to be with us as he, we still have the nativity scene up. And he came, he came to be our savior, to be our Messiah. And this highlighted again in the baptism in the Jordan, which actually ends the Christmas season. But it's a theme that continues throughout the life of Jesus. In his baptism, he begins his public ministry, which started when he was age 30. So he has all of these years of his hidden life, uh, as, as we say. But as soon as he begins his public ministry, he begins redirecting, saving, and washing humanity from its own messiness. His first step of doing that, like every step, was very intentional. And this was through his baptism by John. And we know through the Gospels that John's baptism was just a baptism of repentance. And really, Jesus didn't have any sins, so why in the world did he get baptized? Even John was like, wait, wait a minute, you don't, you don't need this. The reason why he did it is because he transformed what baptism was. His very first step right out of the gate was to initiate the first sacrament that we receive in our lives. He wasn't wasting his time, he was getting right to work. And this is directly related to his mission because his mission is to save us. As we hear in John 3, verse 5, unless you are born of the water and spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Baptism is the ordinary means of our salvation. 
This is a clear explanation for why he instituted it right away. We need baptism because through the original sin, through the first sin of Adam and Eve, the gates of heaven were closed to all of humanity. An original sin entered into the world. But Christ, he opened these gates through his death and resurrection, but now needed a way to apply his salvation to every soul individually. So the sacramental waters of baptism wash away that original sin and give us the ability to grow in holiness, to receive the sacraments, and to hopefully enter into heaven. It's the first step of our sacramental life and our life in the faith. The baptism and all sacraments are instituted by Christ. And they have outward signs that tell us of the invisible spiritual grace that's happening within our souls. But we are human, so we need those physical signs to come to knowledge of things. For example, we would not know if we were in this church if our eyes were shut, our ears were shut, and we couldn't feel anything. We just think we're in like a a black space of, of nothingness. We need those senses to tell us what is going on. And God knew this. And so he designed the sacraments in this same way. It tells us of the inward realities that we can't see and feel because we can't see and feel grace. It would take even more faith if the sacraments were just invisible. Wouldn't it be weird if they were invisible? Like we would do all the same prep, like First Communion Confirmation, for example. We would do all these classes, all this prep, and then we would just set a date. And we'd say, okay, January 8th at midnight, you'll be confirmed. Like automatically. Like it doesn't work that way. It could, but that's not the way God designed it. We need those physical signs. It just wouldn't make sense if it was that way. And so just as Christ came to be physically among us, because we needed that physical proof and those physical words and those physical actions, so he gives a, us a physical means of his grace to accompany us throughout life. And we can see this in all of the sacraments. Usually after baptism, somebody will then next receive the sacrament of confession. They'll, they'll make their first confession. The, the concrete sign in this sacrament to know they're getting the grace of absolution is the priest saying, I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This allows the person to take responsibility for and to clean up the messes of their life and to receive grace to continue to do so. And this sacrament is second because it's needed for the rest of the sacraments. Hopefully never receiving another sacrament in mortal sin. It helps cleanse our souls and make us worthy. Next sacrament a person usually receives is the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. It's that outward sign of that bread and wine that we know to be the blood, blood, body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ that gives us the grace of union with him and an increase of sanctifying grace and an increase of charity. Confirmation usually is next. The sign of that is the laying on the hands and being anointed on the forehead with chrism oil. In that, we are given the grace of becoming soldiers of Christ, of being able to live out our faith boldly, something that is needed so much today. And then when somebody gets older, most people enter into marriage The outward signs of that is the couple exchanging their vows before God and the church, which gives them the grace to be good parents and spouses. Then some people become priests, receive the sacrament of holy orders, which is the laying on the hands by the bishop and having their hands anointed with chrism oil, marking them for service for the Lord, carrying out Christ's saving work of salvation especially through the sacraments. Then all of us in those moments when we are more sick in our lives or the end of our lives receive the sacrament of anointing. Once again, the sign is being anointed on the forehead and then the hands, receiving the grace to suffer well. We really don't think about the sacraments very often, but they're kind of inspiring when we think about it. There's something about it that really speaks to us. We should celebrate them. We should truly celebrate them, the time that they come. And we should remember the dates 
and even the circumstances of which we receive those. Even though everybody can kind of share their stories of, of the circumstances of when they made their first communion, confirmation, marriage, all the circumstances are different, but the grace is always the same, which is interesting. It's always good for us to prepare well for the sacraments, even the ones we receive a lot, Eucharist and confession, and to receive them on time. The church lays out when they should be received. Jesus instituted in that way. They're there for a reason. If we've missed any sacraments, it's good to be caught up on that or to encourage others to get caught up on their own sacraments is a good thing so they can receive that life of grace that the Lord has to offer to them. The sacraments really, in a way, they really tell our story. If you think about it, our life is punctuated by the sacraments, especially baptism and marriage. But all of them kind of hit those monumental points in our life. You know, baptism being the first and anointing the sick being the last. And those being in the first and last parts of our life. It really tells our story. But kind of like Jesus, his public ministry starts with the baptism, but then his life ends with the death and resurrection. And it's the death and resurrection which actually makes the sacraments efficacious. Baptism wouldn't have been efficacious until his resurrection. And our story isn't always perfect. There's always ups and downs. There's messes in between. But the grace, but the grace helps us to respond to God perfectly through the sacraments. Just like Jesus, even though his life wasn't perfect, he was always perfectly responding to God the Father's will. And that is what we are called to do. And living out the sacraments will help us do that. So even though my life must, might be messy now, it'll be calm and serene in the end when we are all gathered together in heaven. For God's holy church, may he bless her with continued growth in number and in holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. I like to hear our prayer. 
For all who exercise leadership or influence, may Christ guide them in their lives and their work. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, the destitute, and those experiencing loneliness and sadness in this season, let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may God strengthen us against temptation and graciously hear our prayers for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the light of faith, may God soon welcome them into his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. It is right and just.
Amen. As I went down to the river to pray, Gideon without that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Oh Lord, show me the way. Oh sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh sisters, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear 
the starry crown. Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down. Let's go down. Come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down. Down to the river to pray. to the water and let all who have nothing let them come to the Lord without money without price why should you Let's pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be made your children in name and truth through Christ.
Christ our Lord. Amen. Got my microphone to work. Just one little button, that's all it took. I, I noticed it's a little softer. Is Was the Ambo and this mic, are they too low? Okay. Yeah, it is too low. Okay, thank you. Yesterday it was squealing, so I adjusted some things, but I'll, I'll turn it back up a little bit. I, I didn't know if it was too low or not. Yeah, I'll do that after mess. A um, couple announcements. Uh, Father Charles did end up, end up t- testing positive for COVID, uh, surprisingly. He, he ended up getting symptoms later in the week. I talk to him pretty much every day. Uh, he, has, he doesn't have any major symptoms, so I, I think he'll be fine. Um, but he said he should be back next weekend. Um, but it was actually kind of providential. I was on vacation. I didn't know vacation could be providential, but I guess it is. Um, so I, we weren't in contact, so I don't have to quarantine. And as soon as he got his positive test early in the week, he, he decided to move out and go elsewhere. Um, so the office will be open this week. Thanks for your patience with the office being closed. I know that makes things difficult. Um, we still won't have Mass during the week next week, since I'll be at Trinity offering Masses there. He didn't want to wear me out, I guess. Um, so we won't have Masses here. Um, but if any needs arise, please give me a call. I'll be happy to take care of anything uh, for you. I'd be very happy to do that. Um, we will still have adoration. We have somebody to, to help us out with that. Um, so we'll still do that. Um, yeah, I think that should be it. And he'll be back next weekend probably, and things will be back to normal, hopefully. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. God, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit. Full of your creatures. 